Hello and a very warm welcome to The Real Talk. We hope that you had a wonderful week. Thank you for sparing time to join us. We are extremely happy to be coming to you from Izere Arts and Media Hub. And the reason we're shooting from here today is because spaces like this are very dear to the person that we'll be talking to. Our guest today is Dr. Ron Adam, the Israel ambassador to Rwanda. I'm very happy to see you. How very are you? <laughs> Thank you for honoring our invitation. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So, you know, uh, Ambassador Ron, you and I have been friends for a while and I've seen people around you not sure whether to call you Dr. Ron, Ambassador Ron, call you Ambassador, or call you Ron. So I wonder, what do you want me to call you today? So this question is actually on time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Yesterday, I met the president. Uh -huh. Yesterday, this week. Uh, and um, he just came to the room and said, Ron. Yeah. So you can call me Ron. So I can call you Ron. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for honoring our invitation, mm -hmm. Ron. 30 years in the foreign affairs and 30 plus. That's quite many years. Mm -hmm. Let's start this conversation with you telling us a little bit about that journey. Mm -hmm. How has it been for you? Thank you. So um, it has been a very good journey and um, very interesting. And recently I had to actually recommend about this journey to the newcomers of the ministry. Mm -hmm. So we do every year a campaign about joining the ministry, joining the foreign service, because mm -hmm. we want to have the best ones. So we do a campaign with PR, with Twitter, with all the medias. Mm -hmm. And in this campaign, we call people to register to this big bid, big tender of, of, uh, of newcomers. And we have usually, we get 2,000 of them every year. Okay. And we choose 20, the best. Uh -huh. So I had to write, uh, and I actually tweeted about it in Hebrew this time because I had to write to those potential people to join. Mm -hmm. And I wrote that I had a very interesting career. Yeah. And I recommend it. You recommend it. Uh, yeah. And in our system, you don't, you don't designate anyone to be anything in, as ambassador or whatever. We have, a, 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 you, cho you choose, the, there is a committee who choose you and we are only, those who compete, we are only career diplomats. So we are all many years in the ministry, many years as career diplomats, and we are chosen by a committee to certain jobs. So, oh, yeah. mm, so it is um, something that you don't bring people from outside. They've got Just to be in the system. Inside the system. So, um, yeah, so during the years, a very interesting job. And I just told, telling my friends in Minafet that uh, I always wanted to invent myself. So I, I really call everyone who listen, and especially the youth, invent yourself. Start thinking what you can do new, what you can um, invent. Um, and then what are you good at? And learn something in depth and then benefit from your knowledge. Be the expert after like getting in the job, be an expert on this job. Mm. So during the years I really invented myself. I, I did, in the beginning I was involved in the peace process with our neighbors. Then I was uh, in the UN. I was, had a very interesting career in the UN. Uh, I learned, uh, I became the expert on UN, the first person in the ministry who Always people come to him and ask about the UN. You knew everything, everything about, about the, the UN. UN. Ah, oh. you cannot imagine. Were you at the head office? Were you also in some head office? I head did. office, yeah. I was in New York. I was, the head, I was in Geneva. I was in Paris. I was the head office in, in Jerusalem. So, And then I became wow. something else. I, uh, I became a special envoy on energy. So I learned about renewable energy, about mm -hmm. oil and gas, and I became an expert about that. I mean, I was the ambassador of the government on energy. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, it was yeah. very interesting. And what I love about that is the fact that it's possible for any one of us. You know, unfortunately, majority of us get in, and if I have excelled as a news anchor, I want to remain as a news anchor, and yet there's room for me to be an expert on news anchoring. Yes. Get to know everything <laughs> there is. Exactly. That if I'm able to pass it on, I do that with excellence. Exactly. And, yeah. Exactly. 
That's the idea. Mm. And then I decided to come here because they told me, do you want to open a new embassy? Yes. So I said, yes, where is it? I didn't know where it is. You had no idea. No idea. But, but wait, I heard I need to open a new embassy. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going for that because it's inventing myself. I will go to a place there was no embassy. I will open I will find the right place. I will find the right stuff. I will decide on my priorities. What should I want to do? So slowly, slowly, I learned in depth also about Rwanda. And I wow. What is the difference between you representing your country in another country uh, compared to you representing your country in the UN, for example? Yes, of course. It's what is totally the difference? It's difference. It's, oh. it's called conference diplomacy, oh. multilateral diplomacy. This is the diplomacy that you use, the tools, the toolkit of diplomacy that you use in international organizations, okay. such as the UN, such as the African Union, uh, mm -hmm. or such as the European Union, or mm -hmm. anything as is you, it's international organization, let's say, uh, governmental, intergovernmental organizations. So this is one kind of diplomacy. You have to be expert in conference diplomacy, in multilateral diplomacy, because you want to achieve yeah. in the room what you want to achieve. You, you plan yourself what you want to get in this meeting. You plan how to do it. I, I will take this guy from Italy, this guy from Ghana, and my friend from Germany, yeah. and I will ask them to speak on my behalf in order for me to get what I want. Wow. Then I will discuss it secretly with the chairman, and I will get what I want. This is conference diplomacy. Diplomacy. You so you, you convince that. the others. I've got to learn that. Yes. So you convince them, convince a smaller group. Mm -hmm. As long as they have bought in, then it's easier yes. for you. You've got people to support you. Exactly. And if you're a chair, it's yeah. another thing. You, ah. you, you convince uh, friends of the chair. Mm -hmm. You have your friends. You, they will talk on your behalf. They will help you to achieve the goals of the committee as a chair. Mm. Very interesting diplomacy. Mm. And then there is the bilateral diplomacy. How do I do the bilateral diplomacy? That is what I do here, what uh -huh. I did here. That is when you go how is that country, then? Uh, and it's totally different. You have to know the country inside out. You need to go around the country. You need to meet the people. You need to go for the five main sectors of any country, which is the government, ministers, the parliament, the academia, the mm -hmm. media, the private sector. And you mm -hmm. need to know all of them. You mm -hmm. need to map, you need to find the right people to meet. You have a hundred days to know. You have, you have only one chance for the first hundred days. Then mm -hmm. you lose a you lose hundred days. Yeah. So, so that is, that is what you did work. in your first 100 days? Yes. Wow, which and places addition, had you visited so in the country? In addition to the five main pillars of a country, mm. you also meet your, your fellows, diplomats. Uh -huh. So you need to meet your um, other ambassadors in these hundred days to learn about the place, to learn about their priorities, yeah. to know what they do, to get ideas maybe, and then uh, you start working. Wow. And in the work also, you need to know how to meet people, how to benefit. And we can talk about that. Mm. You know, you've done that quite well. And yes. we will come back to it because we've, I have seen you and not just me, but a lot of who will testify that you've gone out of way to learn everything there is about the country. But I'd love to take you back to, so when they had told you you're going to set up this new embassy, what went into the preparation? How did you prepare yourself to come to East Africa for the first time and to Rwanda in particular? Hmm. Well, I must confess, I did not have time to prepare myself. <laughs> I did read about Rwanda and I, because I did not know much. So yeah. I did uh, start reading and I got the job. I got the job in the November 18 and I came here first time in February 2019. But in the meantime, I had to do my own job in the ministry. No one replaced me. Uh -huh. Usually this is the case. Uh -huh. Also now my, my successor, she is heading the U.S. department in the ministry. No one replaced her and she doesn't have time to get ready. That's how it is. 
So I uh, read a bit, and I, but I did read uh, about the place. There was a, a, a team that was here to prepare the ground for a new embassy in the sense of the place and what, you know, um, the services that you need to get, uh, etc. So I read the report <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> to know where I'm going, but I really didn't have much time. I must say I didn't have much time to prepare yeah. myself. Well, I started working really when I got here. Mm -hmm. But I had a very good um, advisor at the time, Rwandan, mm -hmm. Rwandan person. I will not mention his name because uh, yeah. maybe he doesn't want, but he He, did, he made it easy for you to settle in. Ah, oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he he prepared the list of the, my first meetings. He knew the, he knows the place. Yeah. And he wanted he insisted to be my advisor before I came. Yeah. I met him in in Tel Aviv actually. Uh, he was studying there, so oh. he he helped me a lot. You need to choose the right people, yeah. by the way, as yeah. a manager. Oh yes. Yes. Because you will not do everything on your own. Exactly. And yet when you have good people, it will exactly. also help make your load easier. Exactly. So part yeah. of the skills of ambassador in this case mm. is to as choose. A first embassy. First, and first, first embassy. First, yeah. first so ambassador, you choose the right people. To choose the right people. And I'm very happy about the people I chose. Yeah, because you're setting the foundation for the rest of the years. Yes. You know? Yeah. So how would you say the four years have been? What's your experience been like? Oh, this is so large question. So, um, so you started to ask me about uh, how I learned this place, and one of the things that I was very, I did very thoroughly is to go around the country. You know, so <laughs> still there are people in Rwanda who tells me that they've not been in all these places that I've been in Yamasheke, <laughs> in Kirehe, in yeah. Yagatare, or elsewhere. Yeah. They've not been there because it's far. So mm -hmm. I say, what do you mean it's far? It's so country. <laughs> Take a bus. Take a two -time Ride time. a bicycle. Two yeah. Ride a bicycle. Yes. Way, it's not easy. Mm, no, it's, it's not, not easy. easy to get in Yamasheke <laughs> for a road by, by, by bicycle. No, if you, if you have many oh, days, I, you can I rest. I'm in Yamasheke because it's very far. It's really the farthest <laughs> place. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, there are other districts. So mm -hmm. it was important for me to go to districts all mm -hmm. over the country to meet the mayor, to meet the vice mayor, mm -hmm. vice mayors, um, and to learn in depth uh, the challenges of a district. Every mm -hmm. district is different, you know. Mm -hmm. Every district has a character, has, has a very different. Uh, Potential uh, and um, I learned how to really to what what can we do together? What mm -hmm. what are the challenges? And I also asked everyone the Enihigo if mm -hmm. you know what it means. Enihigo, yes, I do. Of course, yeah. the the goals that you set and the, mm -hmm. so did you reach? And if not, why? And what are the challenges? What are the challenges you encountered? So I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Uh, I did not come as a, as a you know as an inspector. No, I mm -hmm. came in order to know. What are the challenges and what are the barriers and how can we maybe help? Yeah. In specifically, so yeah. I mapped all districts. I map all mayors. I, I whenever I want to talk to any mayor, I have all the um, people and I, I. If someone calls me, I said. But the main thing is to know the place. <sighs> and I also one more thing before the next, I. Oh was important for me to connect to the youth. And we get there, of course. Yes. But the youth is the current, is the present and the future of this country. And the, and the youth is, a, is, for me, was important to connect through the youth to, to the whole country and the people to people, you know? And through art and culture, we will get there. Yeah, so well. how can I say, I mean, four years? Oh. It's been exciting. It's been exciting. Are you feeling sad that you're leaving? Of course. Uh, of course. I'm very sad. I'm very sad. Um, but the person should not be sad. Uh -uh. So, because it's bad energies. So, um, you have to acknowledge, uh, you have to persuade yourself that it's the right thing to do. Uh, that is a must because that's life. And then you, then I tell myself, I, I'm working on myself because otherwise I would be depressed. Yeah. So, and it's not good to be depressed. No. So, 
every ending is also a new beginning. It's also be- yeah, a new beginning for something else. And every new beginning else. is fascinating, and life is full of new beginnings, yeah. and that's what makes life interesting. Yeah. And especially if you invent yourself. Yeah. And I'm planning to do that, to invent myself. After again. this, yeah. So uh, that's exciting. That's how life goes and goes uh, in a way, in a fascinating way. I want to uh, express my yes, a, a personal observation because uh, I have seen diplomats and the diplomatic corps, whatever you call yourselves, It's a diplomatic corps, eh? that the whole group. I don't group. call it myself like that. Uh, no, you people. My like fellow that. diplomats. <laughs> so the, 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 the family of diplomats, mm-hmm. what do you call yourselves? It's okay. Just diplomatic that? Diplomatic corps, it's good. The diplomatic corps is true. So what, and what I have seen of majority of them, that there was a time when I asked if there's a manual that restricts diplomats from actually connecting with people. Like protocol. Yes, like protocol. Like you've gone into this country. Um, it felt, and, and this is not just here, not just in Rwanda, but I have lived in Kenya, I've lived in Uganda, and I have seen this of ambassadors and other people in the diplomatic space. Yes. They tend to keep around their circle and rarely do they go out. That even when you want to see someone, it will be in a very formal setting, maybe when they have... Um, attended an event mm-hmm. or you know something really do they go out of their way to get comfortable easy and relate now i want to get to the that thing core of it. that passing to the core of it what made you stand out what made you do things differently and while you are doing that did you break any rules <laughs> so who rules of who so i didn't break any diplomacy rules. i i didn't break any rule of one the rules no no, no sure. rules of diplomacy for sure okay. so about the manual um i don't know of such a manual and if there is i don't know it so no there is no manual okay yeah there are there is of course the convention vienna convention which is the convention of uh, diplomacy etc Um, but that's very general about protocol and um, and uh, but but uh, um, I don't think there is a manual I don't know of it there is some rules that uh, I, I even cannot designate it that people are allowed to you're allowed to live in a country I enjoy learn it my and... course I mean oh. we learn as diplomats we learn differently we learn different diplomacy uh, oh. we learn it differently we are you In, we, are, we learn how to connect to how you connect to a country through connecting to people to the people mm. and that's and for example which can give you a hint mm. I always worked here through NGOs through the civil society mm. I in and by that I empowered the organization the civil society and by empowering the civil society I empowered the country to In different things that I did and I can give you of course an exa- example of so many things that I did through and with as a partner with civil society mm-hmm. so you you empower the civil society which needs empowerment and needs help to exist and through that you do things for the country yeah. it's easier for you to serve to serve them yeah. yes after you've you know after you've connected with them you've learned about them yes and you have the the civil society organizations that you're working with it yes. you become a better servant yes. yeah we're taking a break yes when we come back mm-hmm. I want to know of the lessons that you have learned mm-hmm. you know we Africans have a habit of traveling far off to learn lessons mm. now I want to know this Israeli man what lessons have you learned from Rwanda and Africa mm-hmm. that you're taking back home with you that's very important yes we will be back in a short while thank you for joining us on the real talk Welcome back. This is The Real Talk on RTV. My name is Jackie Lumbasi. Our guest is Dr. Ron Adam, the outgoing Israel ambassador to Rwanda. We're probably coming to you from the Israel Arts and Media Hub. Uh, ambassador Ron. Uh, Ron, before we move on, before we get back to my question on lessons, let me read you some messages that I got online from people 
that you interacted with. There's a gentleman called Jerusalem, Jerusalem Yuji, who said, mm -hmm. this man deserves a medal and a Rwandan name before he goes. I saw him give all himself of himself to Rwanda. I saw him in so many initiatives to make Rwandan lives better. When it said normally, do what you do with your heart and give it the best because someone is always watching and clearly everything you've done, the things you did effortlessly, people noticed and appreciated. There's a King Gabo and he's a friend of yours. You met him, you visited him. Of course. He said uh, to my friend, Ambassador Ron, your country brought you here and now it's time to say goodbye. I know very little about politics and diplomacy, which was the purpose of your stay. What I truly know is that your kindness and humility will be remembered forever. Beautiful. There's also a tribute from Mire who said, one good morning in 2019, I stepped out of the lift heading to the office as usual, mm -hmm. but this time we welcomed a new neighbor on the same floor. And she says down there, though sad to bid farewell to Ambassador Ron as the first ambassador of Israel to Rwanda, this is just a goodbye. Your authenticity and ability to connect with the young and old, the students and heads of state, the graduates and CEOs, while being genuine and a friend to all is a unique leadership quality and ability. My friend Mireille, thank Your you. Your friend Mireille, and mm -hmm. we all have learned something from you. Personally, your humility is something that I love so much. And if ever I become a leader, I'm not yet there, if I ever become a leader, I will definitely want to emulate you. Get back to my question on lessons. What lessons are you leaving Rwanda with, Ambassador Ron? So, um, by the way, uh, I really thank you. Thank you for, I mean, I thank all my friends and, and the, the very touchy messages that I also saw. And, uh, yeah. and I'm very thankful for all of you who wrote anything. <laughs> um, so, I learned a lot. First of all, I learned uh, to I learned proportions. Although my life is is like is is um, I I take always when I'm in uh, and I this is advice that I give whenever you are in a trouble you feel uh, you feel uh, um, tense um, you feel it's the end of your world proportions. There's always a worse situation always um it can be much worse so much just worse control yourself and and the benefit of what you have and where you are so i learned first of all i learned proportions because i've never been yeah. in africa and i saw how people live and you know there are still many many places yeah. of poverty and uh, people are poor many people uh, but they're smiling they're happy. Yeah. You walk to the street, you see people are waving and children and they, maybe they didn't eat anything in the morning. Or but they're the smiling. Day. But they're smiling and that's so fun and, and that's great, first of all. That's great and it fills you with good energy. Yeah. And um, whenever I will come here, I will go around, uh, of course, to, to, to villages. And, and by the way, this is, that happens to everyone who comes here. Uh, it's not... So, of course, everyone who comes here fall in love, but that's not your question. Fall in love with this place. And I can explain how and why. Mm -hmm. But what I took, in addition to proportions in life, is, um, is um, uh, consuming less. Just consume less. Consume what you can have. Don't think about, you know, in Israel, we have such a huge supermarkets with so many kinds of, only yogurts you have about one, hundred sorts yeah. yeah you know it from other yeah. countries you know it from kenya and so when i came it when there was limited things to buy and i was happy yeah you loved happy. that yes. difference mm. some consume less don't you don't need everything you don't need to buy all the time food and you throw i never throw food because i am a i'm a second generation of holocaust survivors and they didn't have bread and they didn't have food, so I never throw food. I, me personally, I never throw food. So I buy exactly. Well, you know, I, I have seen that actually. Seen I've, that. I've gone exactly. for lunch with you. Yes. And very little, you, you were having salad on that day. Yeah. Very little uh, leaves. 
Yes. Remained on your plate. Yes. And no. you actually asked for them to you asked them to pack it to for pack you. It. Yes. You took it away. So I didn't say how that that moment um there, there was something I learned at that particular moment but then I was also just thinking, "Eh, this man there's different levels to frugality, but this ambassador is really frugal, but you have that as a principle. You don't throw food. No, and I take exactly the amount I need. So uh, mm -hmm. here you learn not to, to take in proportion your cons consumption. Don't You uh -huh. don't need to buy everything. You don't need to buy. You, you It's good also for you and also for Earth, you know, also for, for the environment. Mm -hmm. And also I, I got proportions about money. Okay. So for me, ten dollar not such a big deal, yeah. Mm -hmm. But here, as I was uh, mentoring mentees, I had a few during the years, mm -hmm. and it was exciting. By the way, I can talk about it if you want. Mm -hmm. But the, they also they only need ten, twelve k a week, yeah, just to survive, to buy panta, to for motors, for. And um, even one of my mentees, he gets 12K and he gives to his mom half because she doesn't have enough money. Can mm -hmm. you imagine? And that makes him happy. And he the gets by. K. He survives. The and he survives. K. And uh, wow, I learned how to treat money in a different way. And uh, how $10 matter. It's precious. Precious. Mm -hmm. You know, so... This is a very important thing, and I, I really call everyone to come and to mm. be, to get these proportions, to get um, to consume less and to to value money better mm. after being here. Yeah. Uh, so this is about uh, the, so this is not about emotions so much, but about consumption. Mm. The the but but emotionally, I. Uh, I learned a lot about people, about kindness, about humility, even, and it was amazing. Okay, were there any similarities between where you're coming from and this place that became your home? Yeah, so this is the whole thing. If you thing. can share that with us. Mm. It's the whole thing, it's the similarities, it's the whole thing oh. that connects me to this place. What is that? So, <sighs> Holocaust and genocide against the Tutsi, it happened in a difference of 50 years, but it is copy-paste, oh. which is mind-boggling, of course. How can it happen 50 years later? Human learn. beings don't learn, huh? Don't learn. Yeah, we don't learn. But they do learn. These guys who made, who did the genocide, they learned from the worst. They learned from Hitler what to do. And, uh, and that was, uh, but, but never mind that, being, as being a second generation of Holocaust survivors, mm. I met survivors. So I actually, did, yeah. as if I met my mom. My mom survived, she was nine years old. She was in a concentration camp in Germany when she was nine. She lost her childhood. And that Selina Wineza, who is a, a mm. person who was nine years old, it took, was taken to Kabgai, like a camp, mm. and um, lost her family and um, I, I, I connected You imagined her. your mom at that I, age. As if I connected yeah. to my mom and my mm -hmm. mom never told me anything. Not my father too, they both were in a Holocaust. So I connect with the first generation oh. as a second generation. I connect with second generation also of survivors and um, and for me, it was something unique. No one can mm. do it. No one can replace me in this sense, in that mm. sense, because it's unique. Mm. And uh, I really connected to heart, the hearts of people. Yeah. And I did, I took it much further. So I, uh, for example, the issue of second generation transmission of trauma, which probably I myself have something that is transmitted as mm. my, my parents' trauma in the Holocaust. So the, the, all, the whole basket of mental health, which I promoted here through conferences mm. to raise awareness. The youth should know that there is a way out of stress, of depression. You, you can talk to someone. Mm. You, you don't have to go for drugs or for, for, 
alcohol or for violence. No, you can treat yourself and there is a way. It's, it's not stigmatic anyway, it should not be. Oh, it's part of life. And, oh. uh, and so I, I really did a lot in that issue. I finance uh, as far as I could conferences, raising awareness to mental health, raising to, uh, to the awareness to the fact that tra uh, trauma can be transmitted in DNA through DNA. Oh. And uh, it is facts. I bought some, uh, you know, practitioners and psychologists and they spoke about it. Oh. And we gather youth and they, we made a PR about this so that we can do a, a make a change here. Yeah. It's, it's not a bad to, thing to, to do. save a generation. Exactly. If you're going to, if the current generation will be helped to find healing, then yes. yeah, or find better ways of healing. healing and sharing yeah. and telling the story. So I also help uh, the the cult to promote culture of writing mm -hmm. and reading. I have many partners that I did this activity with. Yeah, of promoting the culture of reading and writing. You know, they say that art is therapeutic, and you know, there's a reason I came here with you because. Mm -hmm. I know you've spent a lot of your time in this country visiting, mentoring, and talking to artists in the different um, lines of it, musicians, painters, and yes. weavers, and all yes. these other people. Yes. And is it is it because it was coming from a personal point? Were you trying, now that you've just talked about trauma and depression, at all, were you looking for that healing for yourself and this place provided a safe space for that. So personally, I am a, a hidden artist. Yes. <laughs> My first job in life was was a graphic designer. I was a graphic designer. Oh wow! And my first money that I did was from designing. I designed logos and I sold them. I designed stamps. We had stamps in the past. Yeah, we did. Remember these things we put on the I saw them. And Some of these young letter. people didn't, but we I don't did. Know. Yeah. But there, there was such a thing. So yes. we had to design stamps and posters and that's what I did mm. for money. Not much, a little bit money, mm. which I started my life with. Yeah. And that was my first passion. And so I have also paintings recently one of my mentees is an artist, and I uh, showed him my artworks, and he was shocked. Wonderful. He did not give any idea that I am really painting. So I'm uh, also just getting to not know. Not such a huge, but I did paint with with mm. oil. I painted with with graphics instead mm. of pen. Anyway, but uh, I moved on because I was not accepted to mm. a school which I wanted to learn to study. The yeah. School of Art in Israel, oh. very high level. Yeah. They thought I'm too nerd. I too, I'm too. I'm not a typical artist, you know. Mm -hmm. So they, I was boring for them. I was too boring, oh, and gosh. that they didn't take me. So yeah. then I had to find something else. So yeah. I decided I will study political science oh. because I was always mm -hmm. interested in politics. Politics yeah. in the good sense, not in the bad sense. Yeah. Politics, I mean. Uh, history Good of, politics. of uh, international relations mm. and you know history of other things and I was also interested in history so that's what I studied at the end uh, which brought me to be a, at the end also um, a diplomat yeah. because I did have it in my dreams mm. to be a diplomat I mm. had it in my dreams you did I remember it very well that I wanted to be a diplomat at what age did you start oh, training? I think already 16 oh that was a young age. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I did. And uh, and by the way, I did not, I was not accepted also to the ministry first mm. time that I applied. So I applied a second time. Uh -huh. And then I was accepted. So people don't have to fear of failing. Uh -uh. No. It's good. You learn and you, you learn from try it. again. Yeah. You try again until you get it. Having interacted with a lot of Rwandan youth mm -hmm. and youth around the world, considering you've served in different places, and I've been to Israel, a very strict country, everyone goes through military training and all, yes. you know, different countries, different systems. So if you, you have, not if, you have interacted with youth around the world, what you say would be is, is the unique aspect of the Rwandan youth and what sort of opportunities are there for them? So I must say, I 
don't think I interacted too much with youth around the world, I must say. Oh, this was the first time you were all out? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, but if you ask me about Rwandan youth. Let's talk about the Rwandan youth then. They are so talented. They're talented. Oh, That's good to hear. They are so talented. <laughs> they are so smart. You just have to take the one like that, scaling up, you know? Yeah. Because there are so many smart, sci- there are so many scientists in potential that are fetching water, that are fetching water every day with the yellow jerry cans in the villages, mm. and they are busy in doing that half a day, you know? Mm. And uh, even after, even when you finish high school, you go back, you are good in high school, you're good. Yeah. You go back to the village. And you don't have... Well, you continue you have fetching have, water. Exactly. Yes. Or bringing or making a bring charcoal and bringing charcoal. Yeah. You're busy in the basic work of the house. And uh, so I had a project which I uh, wrote about. I hope that it will be implemented. That maybe it's a good timing to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had a mentee who, who was very good in school. But he, he went back to home after the school and he really did what I described, yes? So he was busy by nothing. I mean, really nothing. It's important tasks of the house, mm-hmm. but it's nothing for the nation. It doesn't bring any... It's, it's not progressive. It's it will not take you anywhere. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. And it doesn't take any way in the yeah. ca- for, the, for the country. Yeah. So I decided I buy him a computer and internet. Wow. Yes. Oh. So computer costs three hundred fifty dollar and internet costs sixty dollar for the box and then ten dollar for a month. Not a big deal oh. for me. It was not a big deal and it's not a big deal for I don't know who. For for example, for the country or for the minister for a private sector, let's say, or banks. Let's say a bank. A bank that does so many, I don't want to name now banks, but they know the bank that does very well, okay? So take the 3,000, I made the calculations and I got the numbers from from the examination uh, authority and the REB and everyone. There are about 3,200 excellent students who finish every year. Not big number. Uh, They get all A's. Right? Mm. All A's. And they all pass very well. There are only 3,000 of them. Give them a computer. You know what he did to my mentee? He connected to the world. He applied to universities. He, he learned English. He, I mean, he became, he became, he continued the journey because he was a good student. But he could apply. So now he's ALU and he's very happy. And it's amazing. Yeah. Otherwise, he won't be anywhere. Still fetching water. That's true. And um, all they need is support. They need a computer, and and the calculation is one point eight million dollar a year. Oh. That's all. So bring me a bank. Give oh. these guys a computer, the three thousand of them, and at least you save the best. Yeah. And once you've made, you've given them a way of earning a living. Eventually, they will pay back that money. Of course, to the, they will. Yeah, if, to the country. Yes, to the country, learn, they will. They will be, yeah, they yeah. will go, they will learn, and they come back. Mm. They will be beneficial for the country. We need more skilled people. We need more mm. engineers. We need more software engineers. That's very true. We need people, we need skilled people for the industry that we need here, mm. for the international companies that should come here. Yeah. So, anyway... What was your question? I get the point. <laughs> it got lost, don't worry. It got lost. <laughs> uh, um, and we will be going to six Qs. I love six Qs. It's very quick questions. And we might just have to change the dress code because of that particular segment. But we will okay, see. Okay, let's see. <laughs> but before we get there, um, so in the time you've been here, you've made very many friends. Some got really close and became almost families. The people that you're mentoring, some of them you've met their family members. And I just wanted to know, are there chances of you coming back to this country? <laughs> coming back? Yes, there is a chance. Ali, you said people fall in love and for different reasons. Yes, for sure. You cannot really... Tell me what you fell in love with and what will bring you back. Because I have a feeling something will bring you back. Yeah. 
So uh, <laughs> you fall in love with this country generally because uh, I fall in love, I fell in love with the journey, the journey of this place. And uh, it's a young nation after all, if we count from, let's say, 2000, 2001, when they, they anyway started to, mm. to get somewhere uh, after genocide against the Tutsi, which left them with nothing, zero, mm. zero, total zero. Mm. The only thing that the perpetrators did not take with them were the roads. Mm. But they took everything else, so all the money, all the buses, all the cars, everything. Else. So they left with nothing. Mm. So really I count from, two, I count 20, 20 years. It's mm. a young nation. Of course, we have a long way, a very mm. long way to go. And, uh, but the, I can say. We're there, taking steps in the right direction. I, I can say there is a visionary <laughs> man who leads yeah. this country. Yeah. And he sets very far goals. He put this point here, here and there, and then we have to walk and achieve it. And that's mm. what happened. Yeah. That's what really happened. Mm. And uh, yes, sometimes we can do things faster, and I have an idea how to do it, maybe some ideas. But the goals are there, the vision is there, and uh, thank God, we'll thank God, there. we have such a leader here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah? And let's pray that he will continue doing what he does for so many years to go. So I, I actually fell in love with the journey. I can hear that in your voice. So you're suddenly coming back. I will, for sure. I will come <laughs> back, for sure. <laughs> We're talking to the outgoing Israeli ambassador to Rwanda. They are coming to you from Isere Arts and Media Hub. When we come back, the ambassador's six cues. Welcome back to The Real Talk on RTV. We're coming to you from Isere Arts and Media Hub and our guest is Dr. Ron Adam. Ambassador Ron, when I asked about the lessons that you've learned, I was looking for something which I felt like um, you didn't touch on, but I'm glad that you talk, talked about the emotional aspect of it. Yes. But so, besides that, there's yes, something else. There is something which I wanted to mention. It mm. is um, every country should learn from the homegrown solution of Rwanda. Homegrown mm. solutions are institutions or, or processes that were used during the kingdom and were accepted by all people, all people of Rwanda, as tools to, to the, the best governance uh, and the best way of, of living. So homegrown solutions, of course, people know uh, Muganda, mm. uh, but, uh, or uh, Gachacha became famous that when they brought it back to, for, the, for the trials uh, after genocide in mm. year 2000, 2002, uh, the, the way of, of um, the, the judicial process in your mm. grass, in your in your in the neighborhood within the community, yeah, within the community. But but there are homegrown solutions such as umushichirano oh. uh, or uh, other tools that are used now that are something that everyone should learn from. And I I did a, recently um, a presentation about I called it the Rwandan secret. Uh -huh. The Rwandan secret is the use the current use of homegrown solutions. Okay. The one and secret is that it builds now on solutions that were brought from the past. And for example, we in Israel, we should learn mm. about things that are used now. For example, the process of president talking to people mm. a few times a year. And yeah, gathering that, that, is, that, that is quite unique, yes. It's unique, it's gathering unique. everyone mm. in one room. Asking uh, people, yes. anyone can ask questions yes. from here and from there and from everywhere. Today is live on, on with, with videos, mm. live on, on uh, somehow it's brought yes. to life. But uh, to in me. the past it was on the ground, of course. Mm. And then they ask the minister, the, the minister, the, the governor, the mayor that's in charge on also the things. different departments. What They're all there, there to answer questions. Why is it doesn't work? But yeah, this is amazing. That's and amazing. This, yeah. Every country should adopt mm. and uh, also our country. And yeah. This is just one solution, but there are so many, there are 10 of them that are used mm. today and it's an uh, amazing thing. And thank you for the RCI, the Rwandan Co Cooperation Initiative, mm. which now shows these homegrown solutions for foreigners. This is yeah. their job. 
Yeah. And that is a very good thing to show. It's the Rwanda Agency for co- Cooperation. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So we have, they, they recently had the launch and you the were launch, there, exactly. Yes. Which I was there. Yeah. Let's go to the six cues. Uh, a few quick questions, Ambassador Ron. Yes. What don't people know about you? That's my first question. Yes. Um, one thing I would say, maybe people don't know, is that I'm a chef. <laughs> yeah. But not too many people know. And, We've uh, learned a lot about you today. You're a graphics designer. Exactly. Now you're a chef. I'm a chef. So I like you're a cooking. diplomat. <laughs> I like cooking very much. Cooking wow. is, uh, is really keeping me. It's like yoga. Oh, oh. I don't do yoga. It's too complicated. But cooking, I love it. It's a passion. Oh. And I cook very well. I think you tasted my food. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, it is... Uh, it's amazing thing. I like pres- nice presentation. I like good food. I invest a lot of thinking. A lot you of also fun. use food to bring people together. Exactly. Yes. That is the secret. <laughs> so every now and then I had dinner with, with people in mm-hmm. Rwanda. And sometimes they knew each other because of my dinner. And it was like... Yeah, that was so amazing. This is one thing I think people don't know. Mm-hmm. And one thing that those that know will miss about you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. What is the favorite place in Rwanda? Your favorite place in Rwanda? So I think, I, I think th- this thing everyone knows already because I tweeted about it. Uh, my favorite place is Karonji. By far, I mean, of course, they're so nice places. Yeah. I, I like very much, by the way, Nyungwe and the, the oxygen there that <sighs> comes from the trees. Yeah. Uh, but... Such a beautiful landscape and view mm. that is coming from, let's say, I, I really, uh, should I mention the name of a hotel? I can, it's no, clear. No, don't, no, 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 until they start paying no, no, us for no. advertisement. Anyway, anyway that's so beautiful <laughs> No, but you can mention hotels. the hotel, it's, it's, we, we know the hotel anyway, already. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but the beautiful view, it's like uh, even nicer than, it's the nicest that I saw in my life. Wow. But maybe I was not, I don't know, I was never been in Jane. New Zealand or I don't know which places. Mm. Uh, Philippines, they say it's nice. I've not been in Hawaii. I've not been in many places, but oh. this is for, by far now yeah. the number one. And what I must say about the, this place is the, the way to that place <laughs> is very bad. The drive through the forest is heavenly. No, no, no. The drive from Muhanga to <laughs> Karonji, there is a like very, <laughs> very bad road. And oh, this, there's a bad road there. This needs to be corrected. Uh, and it was under pretty. construction. For four at that years, it's mine four years oh. and a half since I came, it's under construction. Oh, goodness. And there's so many holes. And that's pity because it's, a, it's the place for tourism. And if, he, if I could go for two hours and 15 minutes to Karonji, instead mm. of go around the country five hours, I think mm. tourism would be flourished there. Mm. And I don't know what happened, but the road yeah. is still there. If you're watching and you're the person responsible for that road, <laughs> please do something about it. Glad you brought it up. Question number three, what will you miss most about this country? Uh, the people, for sure. I will mm-hmm. miss the the, pers- the people who got very close to me. Mm. Yeah. The, the, mm. the of people. course, I can miss uh, the... I, I will miss the weather, by the way, because mm. weather here is more or less the same all year. Very comfortable, mm. 22 to 20. There is no one mm. else that... We have winter and summer. So summer mm. can get to 45 degrees today. Winter can get to minus 10. It's freezing. Mm. So here it's 22 to 28, except if you go far away in the forest of the north. Mm. Uh, but otherwise, it's very nice, the weather, yeah. the people, yeah. and, the, and the cleanliness, the, the beautiful streets. Mm. Did, you ever try the out our food? Yeah. Did you ever try out our food? Will you miss some Rwandan dishes? You're a oh. chef. Did you cook only your kind of food? <laughs> Did you make some sombe in your house? So, um, yeah, so I... <laughs> what shall I say? How uh, do you know that food you miss? I, I, you know, there are a lot of good restaurants in Kigali. Yeah. And some people know that I have a list of restaurants and they are, and the, the, I rank them and it's a very nice. The culinary here did very well. So mm. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> My question of what you will miss has not been answered, but it's okay. We'll be fine. No, it was answered. The green, the weather, the, <laughs> the people. 
What has the potential to keep you awake at night? What is it about life? Mm. Well, uh, sometimes I'm not awake at night, but I wake up very early. Uh -huh. mm. Because I thought once I read a book which says, no, don't waste your time in sleeping. Just wake up, do something, read something, you know. Shimon Peres was uh, one of the fathers of our nation and he, mm. he also wrote about it. Um, so I sleep five hours, it's not enough, five and a half, six hours, it's not much. But um, I, uh, I, what keeps me awake is thoughts. What should I do? Where should I go? Whom should I meet? Mm. Uh, one thing I didn't tell you is that the way I work is that I read the newspaper every day. Mm. I see who is doing the news, who is making news, what's new. I mean, the, in, the, in the good way. Mm -hmm. Someone is, is an artist, is, did that, and, and some, some uh, singer did that, or, or some a ministry did a new thing, how many eggs people eat, in, wow. uh, children eat, or, or how much milk they drink wow. uh, in a day. And so uh, who is in charge on that? And so mm -hmm. I ask to meet the people. You know? Wow. I see you you, you find them in the newspaper and you ask to meet them. them. That's how I did for four wow. years. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. So that keeps me always awake. Should I, who should I meet? Mm. You, 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 you spend, you spend I, time I, writing I, the list. I, I the night. <laughs> okay. Question number five. What's, what would you say? I put an S that was not supposed to be there. What would you say is the highlight of your career? It's been a pleasure talking to you, Ambassador Ron, and you've talked about Rwandans loving you, showing you love. You know, I believe you, you received what you gave. Honestly, if you ask me, my interaction, my observation of you, you only got back what you gave out to the Rwandan people. And we will always, you know, appreciate the time that you spent here and do hope that we will have you back soon. We also hope that the next phase of your life will be as beautiful. We're glad that this becomes the highlight and the peak of your career. You've said it's done. You're not going to go for less so we appreciate exactly. it yeah thank you for your authenticity for your genuine love and for just being you thank you very much i want you to have the last say on the show your parting shot what is it you want to say not me asking you a question <laughs> say something from the bottom no, of your like, heart it's like uh, making a statement and i don't think after this hour uh, it's needed but um but if you like you spoke about how what is the secret how did i do that and of course, I recommend everyone, mm -hmm. if that might be the last point, is to um, stay humble. Stay humble. I think people really respect you much better if yeah. you're humble. Wow. And uh, I don't plan it, of course. I, I, was, I grew up on that. My parents were humble. My brother, we were never jealous on anything. And uh, jealousy is bad. And... Uh, and uh, just stay humble. I, I have all my NTs, I tell them, oh, you reached very high now. You Please, stay humble. Don't, don't, mm. don't get, get lost. Don't, let, yeah, don't let it get, yeah. Exactly. Very it doesn't head. let you change your, your uh, character. You know? yeah. The success, so stay humble. I appreciate that, yes. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jackie. It's been a great pleasure having Dr. Ron Adam on the show with us, the outgoing Israel ambassador to Rwanda. And we do wish him all the best. If you have any questions, kindly ask or comments. Use the hashtag The Real Talk. It's been great coming to you from the Israel Arts and Media Hub. We will see you next week. God bless you.